what is up youtube i am back with another video for y'all today so today i will be doing a story time of telling you guys i gotta calm down y'all because i just came from my side and you know how i be running had to run to get my daughter so let me take a deep breath so. okay I'm better. Just a little bit. So yeah. Ooh, the light. Okay, it's better. Mm. Okay, y'all, excuse me. So y'all will be telling y'all a story time of my experience at St. Dunmix Hospital. I'll put it on the screen so y'all can see. St. Dunmix Hospital in Jackson, Mississippi. How it traumatized me for the rest of my life. And some of you um, may not know this story, but you're going to know now. And I, I told a couple people, so, yeah. And, like, I don't think I told them that this story traumatized me for the rest of my life, but it have, and it still bothers me to this day. And and I think deep down I need, like, really some counseling therapy or something, like, some help to get over this because, like, it still bothers me. Like, I still be waking up, like, I'm still there. So, let me tell you what happened, y'all. This took place last year. Actually, this June coming up, it's going to make a whole year. But this took place last year, I think around, it was, was it May? May is June? It, it, yeah, I, I, I forgot. I just know it was last year. But, y'all, what happened was, it was my graduation night. So, this had to be like around May -ish. So it was my graduation night, y'all, and I didn't graduate, which I should have, but due to me having another child, and it was they were doing virtual at this time, I couldn't um go to school and be like on virtual with her. So that's why I didn't finish out. I wish I had her, but things happen, and it's never too late to go back. But what happened was, y'all, that um it was my graduation night, and I was mad and upset to go on my social media, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. And to see all my friends with they um home dresses on, going out having fun, and I'm in the house with the kids. And plus, I have no support from their daddy, so it was hard on me. So remind y'all, my mama she work a lot, so when she got work, she be tired, so she go to sleep. And my thing is, I look for her, I look forward to her helping me, but I gotta understand too that she be tired too, and I can't always depend on mama. So I was kind of mad at her too. Then because she got work, she didn't help me with them. Knowing it was my graduation night, and plus, like, I'm going through some. And plus, like, my thing is, hold on, y'all, give me one second. Okay, y'all, so my thing is that, um, I thought she was probably understand, but I had to understand from her point of view, too. So, y'all, let me tell you what happened. So, what I did was, y'all, oh my God, I kid you not, this is exactly what happened. Like, this is exactly how I went down. And this one, nobody but God saving me. That's why you supposed to always see your first mind and. Oh my God, God is so real. Because he helped me through this. But let me tell you what happened, y'all. Mommy, can I hold this? Mm-mm. I'll find something else. So, let me tell y'all what happened, y'all. Mommy, can I hold it? Okay, y'all. Let me tell you what happened. Sorry, I had to stop the camera. But, y'all, I actually called the police. So I want to help y'all. I want to... I'm thinking, when you call the police, they're going to come out and talk to you, help you. You know how you just need that extra motivation of somebody else to talk to you other than your parents? Or, like, somebody else. You want to hear somebody else's point of view? I actually called the police, y'all think they're going to come out and just talk to me. And they're going to, like, give me some encouraging words and stuff like that. Yeah, I called the police. Mind my phone out on, so I'm on the Wi-Fi. I called for my phone because, you know, if your phone's still alive, you should still be able to call the police. Yeah, I dialed 911 on my phone, y'all. I will not exaggerate this. Y'all, when I dialed 911, it did not go through for nothing. Like, I ain't never seen that. If you call the police, it, it would not go through at all. Like, like you press but like it just went go through it all. So I got my text now, the app text now. I got on there, I got a police number, y'all. It will not work for nothing. So actually I had to Google the um now I wish I still had where my phone and get re um reset y'all. I would have showed y'all these um the, my history, because I don't declare my history. My history and my call out and show y'all. Yeah. So I Google the police number, y'all. And it did not take me um uh, the person that answered on the phone. It did not um, ring through Madison County where I stayed. Like, it wasn't, like, in my area, no camp on these. And I told my emergency, she was like, where you located? I'm like, can't you track and see where I'm located? Y'all, she had to actually transfer, uh, transfer me 
to the um Ken police thing. So I don't know how that happened, but there was God telling me after them first two times that it didn't go through. You don't need to call them because I know what I'm going to go through. So y'all, they finally came in no time. So I'm going outside. I'm just not even talk to me or whatever. Me and my mom, we go outside. We talking and everything. Mind you, I'm mad because my graduation night. Ended. I had said on the phone, I'm not gonna lie, that I won't hurt myself. But I was just saying it out of angry y'all because mind you, I said my mom won't help me. She she kept on complaining like juice come get your kids, and I know I gotta get them, but I was just mad at the time. Like you can't get them from right quick, so I just calm down. I just need to, I just need a moment to myself. And she wasn't understanding it, and I see why she won't understand me. But um, she kept saying, "Come get your kids, feel like them." So when the police came, y'all, I went downstairs. I'm talking to them. Me, my mom, my kids. We all standing outside. So I'm just not even talking to me. Which they did talk to me. Mr. Jake, police officer, he talked to me very good, y'all. He gave me some encouraging words tonight. I felt better after that because I had already talked to the police. So I'm like, so I know I'm going inside so I can do these days. They'll be all right. So me thinking I'm gonna go back in the house. He was like, "Get your things. We finna go." You finna go? Where I'm finna go? But by me saying I'm gonna hurt myself, if they it was their job to take me into the hospital to make sure that I ain't gonna do nothing to myself. And which I think they can take me to a normal hospital. I'm gonna have a bed, TV, be on my phone. But I'm gonna be back. I'm just be in their room chilling. Plus, they're gonna give me a break from my kids and me get rid of. It's gonna give me a break from my kids and plus I'm gonna be able to think about everything and like get a moment to myself what I was looking for at home. So y'all, I'm I, um grab my thing, I'm grab your, I remember mentioning this number too. Remind me, well y'all can't remind me, but I'm gonna speak back on this part right here. I grabbed my purse and my purse had forty dollars in there. Remember that? My purse had forty dollars in there when I left, and I took my purse with me. So y'all got in this ambulance, and this lady y'all, she was the best. I wish I knew her name y'all. Like she treated me so freaking nice y'all. She talked to me about her experience. She was like she was young, she had kids at a young age too. And um she didn't graduate either. Um and she hated it. Like she like we went through the same thing. She said her graduation night, she was very disappointed too because she was she had a did everything too. She see all her friends graduating and stuff and then look at her. But she said it didn't stop her. Now she is an AMR. Um she said she uh when they got her GED and things were happening out better for her and her kids. So she just tell me, Don't give up, everything gonna be okay. Yeah, she treated me so nice. Like I cannot thank her enough for that. So yeah, I get to say done it. The worst part. I get to say dumb job. So I go in this um I go in the hospital, they got me in the bed right there. They know I'm going to a normal room. So I go up in there and I get in there, um, uh, they didn't have no beds over there to my hospital, so they took me across the street into this other part of the site. It's still St. Dumb, but this other part of St. Dumb is. So I go up in there, y'all. My mom's still in the bed. They push me over there in the bed. So yeah, I go over there, um, uh, he pushed me up there, um, they let me down, took me into this room. Mind y'all, this room is like a freaking prison cell. Oh my God, y'all. It's no TV. It's no window. I can't have my phone. When I first come through the door, he hand, um, hand me your um, bag and your phone. I gave it to him. He put it in his little bag. Took it on bed. Like, I'm in prison. Um, He told me to take out my clothes and gave me this paper gown. So, imagine I'm walking around in a paper gown and y'all, it's only this man and me there. So, I didn't feel comfortable at all because, like, why the lady nurses can't come over here with me and I got to be real with you in a, a paper gown. He was on the outside, but I was in a room. But he's still like, we can see each other. Like, he shouldn't be able to see me like this. So, um, he, on the, the AMR ladies, they gone about their business. They leave me there. So, I'm like, well, somebody should just come over here and talk to me. I'm to get my phone back and put it on the door. So, um, before, listen, before they put me in the room, y'all, I was on my phone. Cause I had to tell my mom she come give me, come get me that night. And I'm just different talk to me and then we, I'm going to come back home. But he had took my phone by the inside to, like, he rushed me on my phone, so I had to go turn my phone inside to cut, cut the conversation short with my mama and get my stuff. So, yeah, I'm in the room, right? So, I'm just sitting there bored. Like, five minutes ago, I'm like, dang, 10 minutes ago, paid. I said, like, 15 minutes, he finally came in the room, y'all. He came in there, took my arm, he asked my name and stuff, took the um, thing. After that, he threw he ain't questioned me though while I'm there. I know the AMR folk told him, but still, you ain't talking to me none of that. Like, I think you, I'm here for help. That's all I want is help. That's it. So, remind you, I did not know I was in a suicidal watch room where they watching me because what I said on the phone, which I should have never said. I should have kept my mouth closed and just told them to read. I needed help, like someone to talk to me. But I just said things I know they're going to come out. And I know they didn't want somebody to talk to you, but now I see they would have. So, y'all. The worst, the worst, the worst. I'm still, hold on. 
Yeah, I'm still just sitting in the room. My, he leave out, he shut the door. No phone, no TV, no window, no mic. I ain't. All I see is my, just a slab of bed. I got y'all an example. Just this bed and a camera right here. This all this, this all up in there. This it. Slap bed, me, and a camera. This it. You can see the camera watching me. So you can be out there watching me. I'm naked and stuff. Might as well take my back out. Oh my god. Yeah, the whole night go pay. This is a Saturday night, y'all. The whole night go pass. Ain't nobody coming to my room talking to me. None of it. I'm like, God, look, they must forget about me. Mind you, I'm the only person in there. They got like three other rooms, but them rooms was vacant. Like, what about in there? Okay, the next day, Sunday morning came, or later day, she finally came. It was like two more girls came out. White woman, not for me, rich, anything. White woman and a black lady came. And the black lady, y'all, like, she act a fool, y'all. Because she wanted to get up out of there. And I guess we were there for the same reason, because we all in the same little, um, you know what I'm saying, room stuff. So I guess we were there for the same reason. Yeah, this lady act a fool. She beat the door down. She cussing and she said what she gonna do. And she saying, I'm here for help. Y'all not helping me. And I wanted to say that so much. Like, but I didn't want to just say too much and like get myself in trouble. Like, cause like, why in the words I'm in here? Y'all not helping me at all. Y'all hurt me even worse. Like, you make somebody want to do something they stuff. You got them in here and ain't talking to them nothing like that. Yeah, so later she said all that. Next thing you know, here come two big old tough security guards. Come up in, um, come up in there. They, to, um, we, we laid out in our bed. They got some big old straps, y'all. How I seen because I went to the bathroom and I seen her laying in her bed. They scrubbed and laid out just like this, straight laying straight forward, scrubbed her down to her bed. So she still screaming, making more noise, saying what she gonna do. She cussing them out and all that. It even scared me. I'm like, what's you talking to me? She saying she gonna do something to them when she get up out of there before having her in that room. So I don't blame her. So now I went to the bathroom, y'all. This is how I seen her. So I'm coming back to my room. Um, They did bring lunch like one time, y'all. It looked like prison food. We didn't want that. Ain't nobody eat their food. So, um, I don't think you do go back out to the bed. I, I, I kept going out asking questions. Finally, a lady came in. And, um, I had my door, my room door open. She gonna say, why my room door open? And he was like, um, I'm really like, I didn't know I was claustrophobic until I was in that room. What? Okay. I didn't really know I was claustrophobic until I was in that room, y'all. So, um, I was, I had to tell him, like, I was, Feeling sometimes when I, I can't do this, I can be in this room. Cause I can go to the bathroom even though I didn't have to pee. Just get up out that room. Yeah. Oh my God. She was like, uh-uh, she her door. She can't have that door open. Maybe even more matter. So I can't even talk to nobody another day. Like, what is they doing? Yeah, so finally, like two more people, a man and another lady came. So all the room was filled up after they all everybody opened their act the fool. Everybody at the fool got tied down to their bed. They could not move. If not, he said he gonna tase them if they keep acting the way they did. So I had to keep my mouth closed, be patient and stuff like that. The white lady kept on saying, when's somebody come to see us? Y'all, this is the hurting part. Don't y'all know they seen everybody that act the fool first before they saw me. I was the first one to come there by myself and the last one to leave. So they everybody gone just over there by myself. The day that I said I'm just finna go crazy or something, finna run up out of here. Like, I made up my mind, so I'm finna really leave up out of here. They were certain and set up in there. Monday, I'm something to go because ain't nobody talking to me, none of it. I ain't got my phone, nothing. Monday, I made up my mind. Y'all, it, that had to be God. Y'all, as soon as I made up my mind to get up out of my bed to go, they was knocking on my door, ready to send a diesel. They said, well, they got you a room over at the other side, at the other uh, part of the hospital. I was so happy. So I'm just know I'm going home that day. Mine just Monday. Y'all, I go over there to the um, hospital. It's a number of people that like something wrong with folks walking around their gown. Folks like they just like some zombies walking, like something really wrong with these. I'm like, ain't nothing wrong with me. So I get on, I talk to this nice white lady, y'all. She was just so nice to me. I told her my story and everything. She was like, you don't supposed to be here. She was like, oh, you need somebody to talk to you and stuff like that. I'm like, yeah, that's all I'm asking for. Well, she said, well, you know, over here, they're not going to let you, they're not going to dismiss you until you participate in these group activities, eat your food, and show them that you're really trying to go home. I'm like, what? I do all this, all I asked was for help. Which I did ask for help. I told her I was going to do, but it was, I was really considering me getting help. So y'all go to my room. The room, the shower was so nasty. I, oh my God, it was dirty up in there. It's very filthy. But this part, my, my, I was saying about my $40, my purse. So as I get over there to the hospital, it's bad back. So when I get to the hospital, once they found me a room, y'all, this when they said they kept me over there in the um the other part of the hospital because they didn't have no rooms available. So as I get um to the hospital, they bring my bags and stuff. Somebody just told me to go in my bag. My phone there, and I have five dollars up in there. How did my 
for it to go from $40 to $5. And come to think about it, the night that I was over there, up in there, um, in the hospital before I left, the guy did ask, come to my room, say, you want some pizza? And I was like, yeah. But I'm thinking, like, he's going to give us some pizza. I'm like, just give us some. Because I ain't, mind you, I ain't, I won't eat that food. Plus, I'm going to pick and eat them. Yeah. He had three boxes of pizza. I know deep down that man used my $40 to buy everybody on that house freaking pizza. He went in my bag, saw that money, and spent it. And I, the chains were $5. And he put them $5 in my bag. That's exactly what happened. And I didn't even eat the pizza because it had Supreme Nile down there. I don't want that. So, I know this way to my $40. And I'm still stuck on my $40 because I want them back. Because he didn't have to take it. So, y'all, back over here to the room. Um, to the lady, how she was telling me how y'all to participate in all the activities and stuff. So, y'all, mind you, I'm the only one over here now, for now, 18 years old. Everybody's over in their 30s and 40s and up on, on, up on their age. People was um there. Wait, I'm telling you about my room. The shower was dirty. My room, the bed was out. I only had a window, a bed, no TV, and a dirty shower. I hated to get up in about head to y'all. Like, I could just go without taking no bath. Plus, I had, I'm not going to lie, I had to go to that. I, I went over there Saturday night to my website, like, Sun and sun, but I, I had some wet wipes, like to keep wiping them like that. But it really go two full days, I take like a full bath. So they were hurting the worst. Okay. So now y'all, um, she talking about I got to play Negroes and stuff like that. So the food over there, it was it was good. I ain't gonna lie, it was. Um, we had to play Negroes, and what they mean by these groups? Well, they have folks come and talk to you. Um, wait, they have folks come and talk to you. And um, really did ask you that what you there for, what you need help with, and all that. So, um, yeah, please get rid of him, like going on. They was coming over there in the rooms. No, you had to go to today, uh, little group room they had and come out and tell like what you there for and what you need help with and stuff like that. What I've been looking for, and like please play any activities. They had like some coloring sheets or. It's like a, a music group, stuff like that. You gotta go to these groups. If you don't go to them groups, they deduct time off you from go home. So you had to. And mind you, got me up at five o'clock in the freaking morning to get your blood pressure done. Or this time knocked out too. So yeah, I did participate. I went to all the groups and everything, so I can get up out of there. So um, Mommy, what's the password? um, please get out. Um, uh, as I went over there, y'all, there's just so much going on. So much going on in my bedroom. But I did go to the groups. Everybody was going to move in a circle. This man, he like, I'm a drug addict. This other lady said she homeless. The other lady said, um, she on cocaine. Like they just said what they was on. I'm the only person that said I was there for like, um, really help us say I'm a, hurt myself. And I'm like, damn, I'm the only one really here for that. Even the people that was in the room with me, that next to me over there, and the other said they were there for different reasons. Not, and I'm the only one there for what I said I was gonna do. So I'm like, some, I like, I know why I'm over here. So y'all, once we got the idea, we colored the pages and all that, then go back to our rooms. But we didn't have to go back to our room. They read for you to stay out. And me, I stayed out in the lobby because I didn't want to go in that room. It was boring. I would really be in the lobby because the lobby did have a TV. So I'd really be out there. And you got to interfere because if you don't interfere with everybody else, you're not going to. They don't want you to be locked up in your room all day. So I'm really trying to meet new people, asking what they there for, how long they there. And what broke my heart was not asking one man how long he was there. He was like, he, excuse me, he been there for two weeks. I'm like, I know I ain't been over here for two weeks. I can't take no more. I need my phone or something. I'm not going to be over here, y'all. So, when he said that, they just really gave me no hope. Did find this one girl come up in there. I started talking to her. Well, we had been looking at each other the whole time. As to her age, she was 18 years old, too. You gave, gave me hope. I'm like, finally, I got somebody from my age. We could talk. Y'all mean this girl bonded like this. Like, we did not leave each other. Ever since we met each other, we stayed on each other's side. No matter what, we stayed outside. Okay, we had to be out there. We had no be from after lobby about by eight. We got to be in bed by nine. Me and this girl stayed out till nine. We were like, we just stayed with each other the whole time. We got up for breakfast. We were by each other. Went to the groups. We got each other. We were trying to get up more for our blood pressure. We made sure each other up and go like we just bun um with each other. Now I'm glad I met her because I actually ended up liking her as a friend. So y'all. We made t-shirts and all that stuff. And to be honest with y'all, same them didn't help. Them groups, I lied. It didn't help me. I lied to get up out of there. I'm going to be honest. I lied to get up out of there. So, this is Tuesday. Tuesday? 
my mother had passed as soon as I grow up to the man is um the nurse. I he I go and talk to him. I cried, pouring my heart out to him. Tell him how I don't want to be up in there and all that. And then when I messed up, tell him I don't want to be up in there. He like, it ain't that you don't want to be up in here because um he like this hospital is always welcome to folks that need help and stuff like that. And um we just he said, I don't think you ready yet, so I'm gonna keep your ears today just to watch you and all that. Broke my little pole feelings. Had to go back out there, participate in the groups and all that. <sighs> my friend girl went in there, she was crying too. We had to both stay. So we did have a little phone on the wall like the prisoners where we could talk to our mom and stuff like that. I talked to my mom. But my grandma, she did not lit up, y'all. Thank God for her. She called every minute, every second, checking up on me. Like, every time the phone rang, it was my grandma. And people just get mad too. They can they people, and it's my grandma calling. Trying to see. Um, girl, be quiet. Trying to see. Yeah, it's they people. And it was really my people. So I thank my grandma for that. Also, y'all, Carrie, please get out here while I'm ready to Hello, it's, um. What's the number? This is, when I leave, what is it, Thursday? Yeah. Okay, so that Wednesday finally came. I'm over there, nothing down waiting to get this message. That's a minute, girl. We talked like, girl, you know what? Tonight we're gonna pray. And it was what did something that I did do, like the whole time I was praying, but I didn't pray like I did Wednesday, Tuesday night. Wednesday, she said, girl, let's pray. Let's pray that we get up out of here. To, um, no, that Wednesday night. Let's pray we get up out of here. I'm like, okay. We got on our knees. We prayed together, and we asked God, please get us up out of there, and we ain't gonna never come back again. Yeah. Dead winds when we got up. We had to get up at five, get our blue press stuff. They're like, okay, we got some people going home today. Who just praying it was this? They were like, once you come out this room, talk to this same nurse that we talk Tuesday. We wanna let you know if you're going. I went over to him. I had the biggest smile on my face. I had to stuff like the little niggas I made a t shirt all that on. I had all that on. So he showed that I participated. He likes, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. He was like, How you doing? I'm like, I'm doing good. He like, what you learned? I was just making up stuff I learned, like, in the groups and stuff. Like, stuff I was over here. Because I was really zoned in on it. I was zoned in on getting up out of there, breaking out. And, um, I told him I learned this stuff like that. He said, okay, I think you be done. Well, he said, you know what? I'm going to let you go today. Yeah, he said that I almost broke my neck getting up out that room. He was like, okay, and you can go call your people, too. I called my grandma. She passed me to my mama, y'all. And I was just like, yes. My friend, she finally went, but first, but first, you know, my friend went first. She came back out, and she was like, uh, um, he told her she can go. She was so happy. I'm like, please let me go. Mind you, I had met a little boy up there, too. He was a grown man, but he was, like, cool with us, too. He was like, you know, and he, it was her. She went first, and she let her go. When he went, which didn't give me no hope, uh, he like, he gonna give him an extra day. I guess he started crying when he went up there. He was like, I'm gonna give you an extra day. So he told me he gotta leave. He probably let him go Friday. When I went up there and I seen that my friend wasn't crying, and he let her go. Had the biggest smile on my face. Went up there and said, yes, I learned something and all that. You know, I'm going to let you go today. Y'all was so happy. And I felt bad for that boy because I know he was ready to go too. So, yeah, but me and her were like, oh, my God, we couldn't wait to leave. Y'all didn't want to wear my clothes and like that. I'm like, y'all can have it. But I did get it. So the lady at the front desk, like, she liked me. This is crazy. She liked me, but I didn't like her. I didn't like her how she treated that white guy because all he asked was, um, for some tissue or something, she kind of attitude with him. I did not like that at all. So I had a whole attitude with her. Like, and I see her, I look at her some type of way. But the whole time, she liked me. And when it was time for ghosts, that her work, wait, she had to work on my friend paperwork and some more people paperwork first. She was like, no, I'm going to get your paperwork first. And y'all said, like, in five minutes, she was like, did you go call your ride on um, your paperwork done? Like, for this, this, this mission. Yeah. When my mama arrived up there, and they said, my mama down there. And the security guard had to walk me out. When I see my mama, y'all, I flew past my mama and the security guard. I just want to get in the truck to my kids and come home. And ever since that day, y'all, ever since that day, I still feel like I'm in that room. Well, I was just up in there in that room in a dark hole with the room shit. It was dark in my room. Yes, it's dark. But the camera light was bright so you could see me. Dark in my room. And I don't wish this up on my worst enemy. St. Dunmans is the worst hospital in the world. I would never go back there. I hate to go even go on the street to St. Dunmans. I don't even want to be around St. Dunmans at all. Because they is not helping you at all. Like, that traumatized me. Like, I hate that. And I would never step foot back. That's why I hate hospitals now. Because it's for St. Dunmans. I hate some St. Dunmans. I wish they could burn the place down. That's how bad I hate it. But, what I learned is... They don't call the police. Cause the police ain't gonna help you either. And um, if there's a sign, 
go with that sign. Because my sign was that Polish announcer. You must went out about your business. And now I am so thankful to be home with my girls. I take life more serious now. I'm very appreciative of my girls. Also, I have another little blessing on the way. And um, it's another girl. I don't buy, don't start tearing up because like this story mess with me. But I have three little girls now and I'm a proud mother and I promise to be the best mother I can be to them. And I thank God for giving me another chance and getting me up at the hospital. And I know for sure God is real because my prayer worked and the next day I was up at the hospital. So I thank God for that and y'all enjoy life. That's all I can say. And if you have another chance, go hard. So that's my story. Hope you enjoyed this story time. If you want to see some more story time, comment down below, which I want to see on this channel. And I promise to support you guys as long as you support me. So, like, comment, and subscribe.